Good morning. God's grace and peace be with you today on this very special graduation Sunday. We're pleased that you are all here and with us today. If you had a chance to see the sun arise this morning, you saw a treat. It was beautiful. And this is the third Sunday in the season of Pentecost. And it is very good that you are here today. It's good to be together. As a reminder, if you missed it, uh, your tithes and offerings can be placed in the offering plates before you leave if you missed it coming in. Today we have a very special celebration. We have the celebration of all the graduates that we are so grateful for. The celebration is not only for graduates, it is also for all parents and family members. It is also for the church. So we are thankful that uh, you have made it to this point, this, this mark in life. And there will be a presentation and statement. Uh, Beth Ware will come forward and I ask and invite all the graduates also to come forward to stand here. Don't be shy. <laughs> All right. I'm so glad to see you guys. It is such a special day. And on this special day, I wanted to take a minute to remind you how much this church family loves you. You've been a part of this church family for a long time. Uh, I, I'm sure some of you were here that were baptized, or anybody here baptized at this church. Yeah. Um, you've been part of the nursery. Miss Joyce back there was saying she remembers she was in the nursery. <laughs> we, you've been in Sunday school. Did anybody Sunday school teachers out here help you? these wonderful graduates. Um, I remember you coming to VBS and then helping as helpers for VBS, going to a few fellowship, the mission trips you participated in, and uh, the wonderful youth Sundays that you shared with us, your leadership. Um, and even in college, we've been keeping tabs on you, Chris, making sure that um, you are doing well. So today, Today we celebrate you as you take this next step in your life and we as the church wanted to thank you and let you know that we have something special for you. <coughs> Chris, here is a book that we would like you to have. It's Lean In for Graduates, and I hope that you'll find it real meaningful. Evelyn, a Bible, another version from, remember the first ones that Miss Barbara Tierney gave you? Well, you've got a new one now, because I bet you've used up the other one, right? <laughs> and Madison. Here you go, Madison. I'm so glad to have you here. This is our, these graduates for this year. Let's all give them a round of applause. Thank you so much. There will be a reception for our graduates after church in the, in the Columbarium Courtyard, and we welcome all of you to come so you can give your own personal congratulations to them. Thank you. Thank you, Beth, and thank you, graduates, for being here to celebrate and allow us to celebrate with you. Let our worship of the triune God begin. In Psalm 96, we hear, 
Let the earth be glad, let the sea resound, and all that is in it. Let the fields be jubilant, and everything in them. Then all the trees of the forest will sing for joy. Join me in the call to worship responsively. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praises to your name, O Most High. To declare your steadfast love in the morning and your faithfulness by night. To the music of the lute and the harp, to the melody of the lyre. For you, O Lord, have made me glad by your work. At the works of your hands, I will sing. Elizabeth, that was beautiful. We join in the prayer of the day. Let us pray. God, your loving hand is upon your people to guide and protect us through the ages. Keep us in your service, those you have called and anointed, that the powers of this world may not overwhelm us but that, secure in your love, we may carry out your will in the face of any adversity. In Christ we pray, amen. Now we come near to God to share the truth of who we are with sincerity and assurance of faith that we have been washed clean in baptism. We now confess our acts of separation from God and one another. We pray together the prayer of confession. Eternal God, in every age you have raised up men and women to live and die in faith. We confess that we are indifferent toward your will. You call us to proclaim your name, but we are silent. You call, you call us, us to, to do, do what, what is just, just but, we but we remain, remain idle. idle. You call, call us to live, to live faithfully, but we are afraid. afraid. In your, in your mercy, mercy, forgive us. us. Give us give courage, courage to follow in your way, that joined join with those from ages, ages past who have, who have served, served, you served you with faith, faith hope, hope, and love, we may we inherit, inherit the, kingdom the kingdom you promised in Jesus Christ. Christ. Now, Lord, hear our silent prayers. Mm -hmm. 
Amen. people of God, the wilderness will rejoice. The dry land will blossom. The people of God will return with joy and singing. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. As God has forgiven us in Christ, we too forgive one another. The peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And share Christ's peace with those next to you and with those you meet during the week. Come to the word of the day. Let us pray. Guide us, God, by your word and spirit, that in your light we may see light, in your truth find freedom, and in your will discover your peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Hebrew scripture lesson this morning comes from Psalm 92, verses 1 through 4. The psalmist lauds God for love in the morning and thanks God for God's faithfulness in the evening. Listen for the word of God. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praises to your name, O Most High, to declare your steadfast love in the morning and your faithfulness by night to the music of the lute and the harp, to the melody of the lyre. For you, O Lord, have made me glad by your work. At the works of your hands, I sing for joy. The epistle lesson comes from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 14 through 17. Paul is saying to the Corinthians and to us that Jesus' amazing love, which made him willing to die on the cross, is the same love that motivates Paul and his followers to go about preaching. For the love of Christ urges us on, because we are convinced that one has died for all. Therefore, all have died. And he died for all, so that those who live might live no longer for themselves, but for him who died and was raised for them. From now on, therefore, we regard no one from a human point of view, even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view, we no longer know him in that way. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation, Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. The reading of the epistle. Thank you, Robert. Our gospel reading for today. Jesus spoke often about the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God. 
he speaks today of the same and a parable. Listen for this good news. Jesus also said the kingdom of heaven is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground and would sleep and rise night and day and the seed would sprout and grow. The one who planted the seed does not know how. The earth produces of itself first the stalk, then the head, then the full grain in the head. But when the grain is ripe, at once he goes in with his sickle because the harvest has come. He also said this, with what can we compare the kingdom of God? Or what parable can we use for it? It is, he said, like a mustard seed which when sown upon the ground is the smallest of all the seeds on earth, yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them except in parables, but he explained everything in private to his disciples. This is the reading of our gospel, our good news for today. And we thank God for this good news. I want to talk today about the subject of play. But first, I want to congratulate once again all the graduates and their parents and family and the church. You all worked hard this past pandemic year to complete. I would like to uh, ask you to do something for yourselves during this summer. I would charge you that during the summer, at least part of your time, that you will spend playing, having fun, maybe going to the beach, going in the surf, maybe just going across the street to the park and playing frisbee, I don't know, something. Be good to yourself. Play. I want to tell you one of uh, my graduation stories also. I graduated from fourth grade. Believe it or not, it happened. In fourth grade, I made it. Yes. And it was easier for me because there was no pandemic at that time. It was about the second day of my summer vacation when I went to my mother, she was working in the kitchen, and I said, Mom, I'm bored. It was going to be a long summer. <laughs> it was a long summer. And she said to me, go out and play. Hmm. That was a dilemma. We had lots of games in the house to play with, with rules defining winner, winners and losers. You know, but my sister was not interested. My brother was not old enough. But the real dilemma was this. School had taken the play right out of me. It sapped my play spirit. Have you ever had that happen? All year in school, I had been told exactly what to do, how to do it, when to do it. And... Now I didn't have that structure. No one was there to do that. Give me that. Go outside and play. Many retired adults. We have had the same issue, haven't we? The issue shifting from a highly structured, regimented, rule-based environment at work 
to then have nothing when we retire, no structure. We're on our own, aren't we, at that point? And we're not often prepared for that happening. So, as a boy, I dutifully did as my mother said. I went out to play. I went out to learn how to play. Seems kind of odd for a child. Across the yard, I walked, and as I walked, I glanced up, and what I saw <laughs> made me stop. I was intrigued. I sat down in the grass. I lay back in the grass, and I watched these great, billowing, cumulus clouds very slowly, very gradually, pass by over my head. All shapes and sizes there they were. And it was beautiful. And I enjoyed it. And as I lay there, I wondered, is this play? Yes. Yes. This is play. This is one form of play. I suggest all the graduates that play continue to be part of your life through school. Play will help prepare you for an enjoyable work life and an, an enjoyable retirement. How? In play, you and I can be spiritually transformed. Yes, there is a linkage between play and spiritual growth. This link is called the theology of play. From a technical standpoint, theology, the knowledge of who God is. And we find it in play. This is learning about God, staying in touch with God through play. I first bumped into the concept of play as a means to spiritual growth when I ran into a friend of mine, a, another Presbyterian minister in Greensboro, and he and I got talking about what he was doing, and he told me, well, I'm, I'm, I'm working in the, in the area of, of play, the theology of play. And I looked at him and I thought, huh, what is that? I had no idea. George Carpenter was very smart. And he told me. He spoke about going to retreats and learning and then teaching how to teach adults how to play for spiritual growth. How better to know God in some important ways. I was intrigued and soon after that I found a book the, the title of which was The God Who Laughs. The God Who Laughs. And this was also intriguing as I read through it. I'd written theologically on how we are made by our creator to be co-creators, but I had never linked with play. I now see there is play in God's creativity and creativity in play for no other reason than to have fun and enjoyment in the acts of play. You see it here in the congregation. As people come together for worship service, there's playfulness. Don't you? You feel it. There is a spontaneity. When people haven't seen each other for a week, they join together, they share, share stories, and play. Creativity is a consequence. It is a byproduct of our play. Play frees us from purpose-driven lives. Got to be here at 9 o'clock, got another meeting at 1 o'clock. Purpose-driven lives. Free. We're free. 
Some of us had a taste of that actually during the pandemic, didn't we? Where we had time, which we didn't normally have, free time. The goal, the purpose, objective, and the outcome of play is to play and to experience the joy of closeness with our God. Laying back, watching the clouds go by, laughing with friends, frees our mind from the weight of living in the world. The Apostle Paul wrote that we are in the world, but we are not of the world as Christians. This gives us the space this gives us the license to explore, play, and develop our spirituality with God and one another. I don't necessarily mean play as in a game with rules leading to winners and losers, but play for pure joy. You see it with children. When they're, they're out here, as I did earlier this week, and the children were out in the playground just having playtime. What fun. So I joined them. Pure joy. What I'm talking about is the playful creativity that is experienced in pursuits like dance or music or song. How about writing? Ever write a paper and have some joy, have some play in the process of doing that? How about when you're in the kitchen cooking? Any of you like to cook? Enjoy the playfulness of cooking. Gardening? I know some here like to garden. There's a playfulness in gardening, isn't there? So many different activities that produce for us bliss and joy. And where we are blessedly free from the cultural bonds of a life driven by worldly success, values of winning and gaining more, and fears of losing it. That's not what God has in mind for us. When we play, we are in the world, but not of the world. Play is an unconscious moment. It's a movement outside of time for a brief blissful moment. This result can also be found in what God calls us to do through our vocations. Now, those of you who are graduating, are going some into some vocation or maybe you're thinking about a vocation that you might want to go into maybe graduate school I don't know but something that you God has called you to do in the world you may find that in your vocation to be called by God may give you great joy and bliss and you can play at your work can you imagine playing at work? I have never heard of Michael Iaconelli before two weeks ago, and I was doing some research and study, and I ran across him. <clears throat> he was a pastor for 42 years. He worked mostly with youth, and he died tragically in a car accident when he was 63. In the last newsletter that went out, I included in that a quotation from him. Christianity is not about learning how to live within the lines. Christianity, Christianity is about the joy of coloring. The joy of coloring. In his book, Dangerous Wonder, he wrote, play is an expression of God's presence in the world. One clear sign of God's absence in society is the absence of playfulness and laughter. Worship as prayer, song, music, laughter, liturgical dance, all are joys we share which glorify our Creator. There is a theologian 
Reformation, Reformed theologian, who is still alive. He, he is 95 years old. Jorgen Moltmann, he wrote the book <laughs> called The Theology of Play. He wrote, the first thing liberated beings do is to enjoy their freedom and playfully test their newfound opportunities and powers. Why are we, or why are we seeing so little of this, he, he wrote. Have the old Pharisees and the new zealots with their conservative and revolutionary legalisms scared us away from freedom, from joy, from spontaneity. It is unlikely that anything good or just will come about unless it flows from an abundance of joy and passion of love. Further, the creation is God's play. A play of the Creator's groundless and inscrutable wisdom. It is the realm in which God displays God's glory to us. And the psalm you heard, as do other psalms, reflect this. For you, O Lord, have made me glad by your work. At the works of your hands I sing with joy. In play for a brief time, we detach from the world. We lose our self-consciousness, becoming again like joyful children on a playground. Parables and play have similarities. Both can move us from the common, mundane routine of our lives to a new and unique perspective of what God is offering as a glimpse to us of eternity. Today's mustard seed parable tells us the coming of heaven on earth introduced by Jesus' ministry was almost imperceptible at first. Like a tiny mustard seed, his, his ministry began in a little town in Israel. Like a mustard seed in comparison with the rest of the world. That's where it began. And like that, it grew. Like a tiny mustard seed, that ministry grew into a large shrub, offering a place for birds to build their nests, he said. This parable is an analogy for the whole created universe and our home, Earth, where we reside, where we nest. This parable, along with others, makes up about one-third of Jesus' recorded teachings. They link the world we live in and understand on the material level. They link it to the spiritual world, unseen world of which we are maybe less familiar. So Jesus' parables and his life enlighten us to how we too can blend or we can link the material world with the guidance found in the spiritual world. The result is a the theological understanding of God's continuing spiritual presence. I believe that in joyful play, we can join God in continuing creativity. A process, and then we can show others how they too can enjoy their gift of life. To the glory of the one who joyfully conceived of the universe, created it, and eternity, and each one of us. Amen. Let us pray. To the God of all grace, who calls us to share God's eternal glory in union with Christ, be the power and the joy forever. Amen.
Let us confess our faith as the body of Christ this morning using the brief statement of faith. In life and in death we belong to God through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit. We trust in the one triune God, the Holy One of Israel, whom alone we worship and serve. We trust in Jesus Christ, fully human, fully God. Jesus proclaimed the reign of God, preaching good news to the poor and release to the captives, teaching by word and deed and blessing the children, healing the sick and binding up the brokenhearted, eating with outcasts, forgiving sinners, and calling all to repent and believe the gospel unjustly condemn, condemned for blasphemy and sedition jesus was crucified suffering the depths of human pain and giving his life for the sins of the world god raised this jesus from the dead vindicating his sinless life breaking the power of sin and evil delivering us from death to eternal life and gratitude to God, empowered by the Spirit, we strive to serve Christ in our daily tasks and to live holy and joyful lives, even as we watch for God's new heaven and new earth, praying, Come, Lord Jesus. Amen. And now the prayers of the people. Let us pray. Lord God, friend of those in need, your son Jesus has untied our burdens and healed our spirits. We lift up the prayers from our hearts and minds for those still burdened, those seeking healing, those in need within the church and the world. Christ, you gather the church in unity through the Spirit. With sure hope, we pray to you. In the fullness of time, you restored all things in Christ. Renew our world in this day with your grace and mercy. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray that you will provide life to our world. Life which is being challenged in many ways. As you breathed life into all living beings and gave us our home, the earth, and our hope. And now by your spirit, Bring, bring new life into the children of earth. Turn hatred into respect, sorrow into joy, conflicts into peace. Lord, hear our prayer. God of compassion, through your spirit, you supply every human need. Heal the sick and comfort the distressed. Befriend those who are friendless. Help the helpless. Be with those leaders in nations around the world. Help them, support them, and instruct them of how they can hear one another and bring peace to their people. Source of peace, your spirit restores our anxious spirits. In our labor, we pray for rest. In our temptation, strength. In our sadness, consolation. 
Lord, hear all our prayers. And all this we ask through our Lord Jesus the Christ, the Anointed One who taught us to pray by coming to you and saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please remain standing for our prayer and our benediction. Let us pray. In fulfillment of Christ's promise, you poured out the Holy Spirit upon us all as your disciples, and you filled the church with power. We thank you for sending your Spirit to us each day to inspire our faith and direct our ministries. Make us faithful disciples and empower us to proclaim the living Christ to every person in need. Amen. And now, 
friends in Christ, be peaceful in your lives. Be watchful. Stand firm in your faith. Be courageous and strong. Let all that you do be done in love. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.